the KKK. Roger Stone joins us now, Republican political consultant, correspondent for The Daily Caller and editor of StoneZone.com and uh, author of The Clinton's War on Women. Hello, Roger. Steve Mosberg, great to be with you. Great. I got to tell you, this really, first of all, first of all explain <coughs> to me why Donald Trump didn't just disavow David Duke. He, he later said he didn't hear, but obviously he repeated the name he heard. What, why didn't he just, why, why did he do what he did? I don't really know. As you point out, he has uh, denounced Duke in the past, possibly uh, because of Duke's multiple plastic surgeries, Trump didn't recognize him. Uh, but uh, the words Ku Klux Klan should have been a key. Look, if I were still advising Donald, which I am not, I'm just a friend of Donald and a supporter, uh, I would have told him in no unequivocal terms uh, to disavow any of these hate groups. On the other hand, I know Trump. He's created thousands of jobs for black people for Asians, for Hispanics, for all Americans. He's just not a hater. Uh, and what you have here is guilt by association. Look, the White House entertains the Muslim Brotherhood. Believe me, that's a racist organization. That Those folks are haters. They are, they're radical terrorists. So you're absolutely right, Steve. There's a double standard here. This is an attempted guilt by association. Uh, and uh, today, I think you see where Trump stands. When Black Lives Matter protesters disrupted his rally, what did he say? He said, "All lives matter." Right. It was. I think it was a very strong moment. It was. What about? I mean, you talk about the double standard. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but you know, Bill Clinton saying that at Robert Byrd's funeral, as if there's some kind of a, a reason for doing that. Let, let's move on. I want to get everything in here. Uh, Trump had this warning, uh, kind of, for the Republicans, uh, the Republican Party. Let's watch. You know, I signed a pledge, and the pledge is a two-way street. And if it's not that way, they're going to have a problem. They're going to have a big problem with me. Do you think Republicans are violating the pledge? Totally. T uh, totally. I mean, if they want to play that game, I can play it much better than they can. And I have a lot more people than they do. And, you know, totally. If they're doing that, uh, that's a total violation of the pledge, yes. All right. And then there's this tweet by Mitt Romney. I want to put it up on the screen. Uh, they're talking about the KKK. He said a disqualifying and disgusting response by Donald Trump. Uh, he is, uh, his coddling of a repugnant bigotry is not the character of America. And I tie him in because, of course, he went after him on the taxes. Now he's going after him on this. He also tweeted uh, uh, over the weekend about other things. What's going on here between Rubio, the establishment, uh, uh, Romney, and their attempt to derail Donald Trump? Uh, Steve, let me clue you in as well as your listeners and viewers. This is very simple. The Republican establishment is not ever going to throw in the towel and acknowledge that Donald Trump is running away with this nomination. And therefore, we're now in a last ditch brokered convention strategy. Uh, as I outlined, uh, the Koch brothers and their associates gave Marco Rubio $25 million, $25 million in New York last week, but told him that he has until the Florida primary. If he doesn't win there, he's going to get the hook. Uh, they also raised $100 million uh, for these anti-Trump ads, which have begun on the uh, all over the place, as Trump would say. Now, the Kochs have both denied that, but denied both these things. But in all honesty, they're lying. Uh, the truth, and that will come out uh, right now, moving around dark money is what they do best. Uh, so what you see here is a strategy in which Marco would be out, Mitt Romney would be in, he would jump into the late primaries, uh, New York, pardon me, uh, New Jersey, California, Michigan, several others in an attempt to grab enough delegates uh, to stop Donald Trump from getting to the magic number on the first ballot. It is entirely possible that Trump could run the table on these primaries, winning all of them with a plurality, but because uh, of irregularities in Ohio, Kasich grabs Ohio, Cruz today narrowly wins Texas, uh, you've already got some uh, votes uh, uh, in the hands of other candidates, and they play a game of keep away because they know they can get to the convention. Then, in the rules committee, they can monkey with the rules as they did to stop Ron Paul. All right. So, so then, vote. Roger, Roger, does then Trump run as a third party? Well, it doesn't really matter at that point, uh, 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 Steve. The nomination would be worthless. But you see, the Republican power brokers, the established Republicans, don't care. They would rather have Hillary Clinton than Donald Trump because Donald Trump cannot be bought. He cannot be right. he cannot be bullied and he would be completely independent of the Republican power structure, the All right. lobbyists. All right. uh, you made this prediction on the show last time you were on a week ago. Let's watch. The other thing you should be prepared for, Steve, is a major onslaught from CBS 
claiming that Donald Trump has ties to the mafia, to the mob. Donald Trump has been licensed by the New Jersey Casino Control Commission in the toughest gaming regulatory law in the country. There's nothing to this canard. These are the kind of smears that were used on Barry Goldwater, by the way. They didn't work. uh, They did work then. They will not work now. And then, it wasn't CBS yet, but then uh, guess who picked it up? Let's watch. Or, you know, Chuck, maybe it is the case. That, that Donald, there have been multiple media reports about Donald's business dealings with the mob, with the mafia. Maybe his tax, taxes show those businesses are a lot more, more extensive than has been reported. All right, your reaction to Cruz uh, going there. Tricky Ted, man, he really is tricky. I mean, look, this is an absurdity. If he wants to talk about associations, let's talk about the fact that Ted's wife was Condoleezza's deputy in the White House when they sent us to the phony war. Or let's talk about the fact that Ted's wife was the deputy uh, U.S. trade representative when they, we got our current China trade policy. Those things seem to have disappeared. They've been airbrushed out of her wiki biography. Or when we talk about the fact that Ted Cruz recruited John Roberts, didn't just push him for G- chief justice, recruited him to the Bush White House and the Bush legal team. So, uh, look, it, this guy is really slippery, but Donald Trump has no association with the mob. And the other issue here, Trump University, this is very clear. The New York Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, went to Donald Trump and his daughter, tried to shake them down for campaign contributions. When they refused to play the game, he brought a, an action in the New York courts. He was ignominiously destroyed in court, destroyed. He lost on every count save one. That one count will go back to trial for technical reasons. Trump will win that count right. as, a, a, as well. There's a 98% satisfaction rate with those people who enrolled in this right. real estate course. Right, it's only this, a couple. This is a fraud. Once again, we're talking about the future of Western civilization, and they're trying to smear Trump because he had a few dissatisfied customers the, in one of his successful businesses. Very quickly, CNN has banned you. Is this part of their effort to uh, to get at Trump, do you think? or, or, or Yeah, was- it's, it, it's Soviet-style censorship is what it is, Steve. I'm critical of the commentator Anna Navarro, who keeps calling herself a Republican strategist, but has never been a strategist in any campaign, any place. She is a she is an ill-tempered diva, and she's constantly dumping on Donald Trump because she's a quizzling for Jeb Bush and now Marco Rubio. And I'm not going to stop saying that she's not qualified because she isn't. But in all honesty, I've been on CNN since last August exactly three times. So how do they bar you from some club where you were never even a member? <laughs> Roger, always good to talk to you, sir. We'll speak to you soon.